Good morning, uh, online church. We welcome your family and friends this morning. Join me for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the morning. Lord, we thank you that you are strength. We thank you that you are our hope, Lord, and our peace. And Lord God, as we go through these difficult days, we know, Lord God, that you
here with you this morning. Um, we're just truly thankful that you have joined us on our live stream. Uh, it's our first time doing this, so we're pioneers, we're frontiers as we venture out into this new territory uh, with all you guys. I know a lot of you guys right now are sitting on your couches in your pajamas, uh, with cups of coffee, bowls of cereal, whatever it might be, and that's awesome. We're just truly thankful that this technology uh, is allowing us to go into your homes and uh, to share some hope, some truth, and some love with you this morning as we all dive into God's Word this morning and as we worship together. Uh, we're just truly uh, amazed at what God's doing through all these things that, that are going on in the world. Uh, we know that there's a lot of uh, uncertainty, there's a lot of uh, questions going on, but for certain I can tell you that God is on the throne. We have certainty in Him, we have hope in Jesus Christ, and His love is going to fill our hearts and fill our minds and allow us to go on and do the things that he has called us to do as men and women of God. So I just want to encourage you this morning, uh, take heart, to stand fast in your faith, to be strong, and, and to know that you can lean on God during these times. He has not left us. He has not forsaken us. He is right where he always has been, and he is calling you as the church to go out into the world and bring hope to the people that have the looks of hopelessness on their face in the grocery stores, to those relatives that might be uh, having anxiety from the things going on. He has given you the words of hope uh, in, the, in the Bible, and he has given you a calling in your heart to, to be that church that rises up and go out. During times like this, like I said, it's all new to us. We're all uh, pioneers as we go into this new thing uh, that we're doing as a church and as a world, but we know that we're not walking blindly and aimlessly. God is our guide. So I just want to encourage you this morning with that. Also, um, if you want to share this with family and friends, let them know that they could drop by right here on your screen or on their own screens at home and uh, join us on this live service. Uh, we're gonna, we'll be working on getting up a live stream service going on this week and then downloading all these videos to YouTube so you can go back and watch them at your leisure. Uh, you're gonna probably have plenty of time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they'll be on there for you to go by and, and just whenever you want some encouragement to hear a message of hope. Uh, also, if you need any prayer, please do not hesitate to direct message uh, the, the Facebook, the Instagram, of Calvary, Calvary Chapel Southwest, or to call the church at 505-833-5441, and we will definitely pray for you. Um, I know I need some prayer during this time as well. We all do, so don't hesitate to call, don't hesitate to, to send a message, and we will uh, pray for you. Um, in a moment, we're going to turn to our Bibles in Psalm 46. And so get your Bibles ready. That's what we're going to be, Psalm 46. And also I would like to ask you, if you want to support the ministry financially, you could give by texting at 505-207-5, um, hold on, I'm sorry, 207-0080. So that's 505-207-0080. Or you could give online at calvarysouthwest.com. Or if you want a mail check, you can go and mail your check to P.O. Box 12852, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87195. So again, we are grateful that we could be here for you. We're, we're grateful that we could be here to serve you. We'll be here for you however we can. Do not hesitate to reach out. And uh, right now, obviously we can't touch or high five or hug, but turn to a person in your living room or wherever you're sitting and tell them how much you love them. Pastor Ray will be here shortly. Good morning, online church. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Southwest Online. As Joseph just said, we're going to be in Psalm chapter 46 this morning. Before we dive into the Word and before we look at the roar of fear, which is the title of this morning's message, let's pray and let's ask the Lord to minister to our hearts through his word. Join me in a word of prayer, grab your family, and let's pray. Father, we thank you that we get to be gathered together in this big living room. Thank you that your people are gathered together in their living rooms, in their offices, or wherever they may be. Lord, we thank you that the word goes out and that the word is effective. We thank you for the hope that the Word of God brings to our hearts. We thank you, Father, that you are our help in time of need. We thank you, Father, that you are the anchor that we hold on to. We stand upon the solid rock of Jesus Christ. 
I pray, Father, for those who might have anxiety, fear, or worry. I pray, Lord God, that you would, God, remind them that they don't have to have anxiety and worry. They can have the peace of God because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He himself is our peace. And he wants to flood our hearts and our minds with his peace, which surpasses all understanding. I pray, Lord God, that we read about nothing. But in everything, I pray that we would bring our hearts, our requests, that we would make them known to you. We'd bring our family and our friends, our neighbors. I pray that you would use us, Lord God, in these perilous and difficult days to shine the light of Jesus and to be the salt of the earth, to bring the love of God to our family, our friends, our neighbors, and that, Lord, you would use these days to draw us closer to you. Lord, we need you. Our dependence is upon you. We trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. We acknowledge you this morning, wherever we're at, and we ask you now, Lord God, to open our eyes to your word. Speak to us and comfort us in Jesus' name. And if you're in your living room, wherever you're at, everyone can say amen. amen. In Psalm chapter 46, we are told that God is our shelter. God is our strength. And God is our support. as they were 3,000 years ago. As you and I know, there's a lot of fear and a lot of uncertainty in the hearts of humanity. And perhaps at this moment, fear has gripped your heart and is roaring like a lion. The question this morning is how do we overcome fear? How do we overcome uncertainty? What are we to do when anxiety comes in like a flood? Who are we to run to? Well, we know who we are to run to. The Bible tells us throughout. If you have your Bibles, I want to read Psalm chapter 46, verses 1 through 11, and then I want to come back and I want to look at three things this morning. God as our shelter, our strength, and our support in time of trouble. Verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. God uttered his voice. The earth mounted. The Lord of hosts is with us. God's with you. The God of Jacob is our shelter. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war stop to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He turns the chariot into fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our shelter. The word refuge in verse 1 also means shelter. God is 
our shelter. God is your shelter. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my shelter is in God. It says in Psalm 62, Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a shelter for us. God is a shelter for us. As it says in Psalms 91, verses 1 through 2, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust Him. He will cover you with His feathers. He will shelter you with His wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home. Those who live in the shelter of the Almighty will find rest in God. And if you make the Lord your shelter, no evil will conquer you. We've been hearing a lot lately about sheltering in place. What does that mean? Shelter in place means finding a safe location indoors and staying there until you are given an all clear or told to evacuate. When God is our shelter, He's going to cover us. I'm not saying that we aren't going to feel the effects of the storm, nor am I saying that we aren't going to be rocked by the waves. The rain falls on the just and on the unjust. But because we live our lives under the shelter of God, when the storm passes, we will still be standing. I want to encourage you to stay calm in the shelter of God. Stay calm in the shelter of God. God is our refuge. God is our shelter. How do I stay calm? How do you stay calm in uncertain times? In the book of Philippians, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Rely on prayer when you start to worry. And thank God for the good things that He provides. And remember that His peace will protect your hearts and your minds. That you are secure in Christ. You are secure in Christ. Jesus said in John chapter 10, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me. And I will give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Our possessions, the things that we possess may not be secure. But our lives, our souls, are secure in God. When we have shelter, we have hope and trust. God is our shelter. Shelter in place with God. Spend time in His presence. 
sit at his feet, pray on, and remember the things that God has given you. God has given you life. You have health. You have a roof, a shelter over your head. You have family. You have friends. You have a church family. You have the breath of life today. We have a strength and song and he has become my salvation he is my God and I will praise him my father's God and I will exalt him God is going to give you and your family the supernatural strength that you need not only today but in the days to come as Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12 9 and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. God's grace is sufficient. God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. Paul the Apostle, as he wrote to the Philippians from a jail cell, he said, I can do all things through Christ Courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua needed to be reminded that God was his strength. God said, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. God's going to give you the strength. Your strength comes from Christ. My strength, our strength comes from Christ and from Christ alone. God will strengthen us in the storm. God will strengthen us in the uncertain times. God will strengthen us. Everything else falls apart. God will still be standing. And we find our strength, our supernatural strength, in the power of the Lord. Joshua was afraid. He had taken over for Moses. And God was calling Joshua to lead the people into the promised land. And there were many enemies in the promised land, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and, and all of these different ites. And as Joshua looked into you wherever you go God is our support God is our strength do you need strength this morning call upon the Lord and ask him for his strength call upon the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to give you that supernatural strength that you need the strength that you need to lead your family to pray with your family to give them the word, to reach out, and to share the love of Jesus Christ. You see, it's not by might, it's not by power, 
but it's by the Holy Spirit that gives us the supernatural strength to make it through to do what God has called us to do. God is our shelter. God is our strength. A very present help in trouble. The word help also means support. God is also our support. He is a very present help in trouble. The word trouble means to be afflicted, distressed, agitated, or to be disturbed. Perhaps this morning you are afflicted. You are distressed, agitated, or disturbed. When we are troubled, God is present to support us. Men and women who have been used greatly by God have had their share of troubles. You have had your share of troubles. I have had my share of troubles. Jesus spoke these words to his disciples after he told them that he was about to go away. Jesus was about to go to the cross and he was about to, to die on the cross. And after he told his disciples those words, their hearts were troubled. Their hearts were distressed. They were weighed down because of what Jesus had told them. And then Jesus said these words in the Gospel of John chapter 14. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I have gone to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. God said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in me. Have faith in me. I am going to prepare a place for you. And during these times of trouble, during these uncertainties, during worry and anxiety and fear and all the other things that can creep in, we need to be reminded that our hope, our faith is in God. And what's the cure for a troubled heart? Jesus Christ. Jesus told Martha in Luke chapter 10, he said, to Martha, his follower, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Worry and trouble have filled her heart. Why? Because she had taken her eyes off of Jesus Christ. And Jesus told her, one thing is needed. And what is that one thing that is needed? What is the one thing that Martha was missing. She was worried and troubled about many things. And Jesus said, one thing is needed. And the one thing that was needed was for Martha to sit at the feet of Jesus and to listen to his word. If your heart is troubled this morning, one thing is needed. And the one thing is to sit at the feet of Jesus. Open his word. Read his word. Listen to his word. Hear the word of God. Hear the voice of God. And the voice of God will calm the trouble in your hearts. God will take away the worry. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Sufficient for today is its own trouble. But seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And all of these things will be added to you. God understands the trouble of your heart. That's why he spoke to the disciples and he said, let not your heart be troubled. No more anxiety, no more troubled hearts will be in his presence for all of eternity. You see, God is our strength. 
And God is our support in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even if every structure of support were to crumble away, we will not fear even when the earth quakes and shakes, moving mountains and casting them into the sea. For the raging roar of stormy winds and crashing waves cannot erode our faith in God. Even if the earth and every structure of support were to crumble away, we will not fear because our faith is in God. The crashing waves cannot erode your faith. If you have faith in God, the waves and the storms cannot erode your faith. God is our shelter. God is our strength. And God is our support in trouble. The psalmist went on to say in verse 2, Therefore, we will not fear. Therefore, we will not fear. Knowing that God is our shelter, knowing that God is our strength, and knowing that God is our support in time of trouble, we will not fear. You might be thinking, well, that's easy to say, but this morning I have fear. What is fear? It's a painful emotion or passion excited by an expectation of evil or the apprehension of an impending danger. That's what fear is. It's a painful emotion or passion excited by an expectation of evil or the apprehension of impending danger. I want you to know that fear isn't good because it has the potential to weaken your immune system and to impair your thought process. Thought process. Fear will crush you and it will paralyze you physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Faith has many enemies, but one of the greatest enemies of faith is fear. Faith has many enemies, but one of the greatest enemies of faith is fear. If you give in to fear, it will take your eyes off of Jesus Christ. And there is no doubt that the enemy wants us to fear, and he wants us to be trapped in fear. David wrote these words in Psalm 34. I sought the Lord and he delivered me. He, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. When we seek the Lord, God hears us and God delivers us from all of our fears. I don't know about you, but I've had fear. Perhaps you have that fear right now. We know this, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but instead, God has given us power, the power that comes through the Holy Spirit and love and a sound mind. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear because Fear involves torment. Are you tormented this morning? Are you full of anxiety this morning? Is fear weighing you down? Are you being crushed by the waves of fear? If you are, call upon the Lord. Like David, I sought the Lord. God heard me and God delivered me from all of my fears. If you're fearful this morning of what the future holds, know this, God holds the future. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. And our hope is secure in Jesus. He's going to get us through. God's going to give you power. God's going to give you love. And as you pray and as you seek the Lord and as you sit at the feet 
of Jesus. He's going to give you a sound mind. Remember, God's love is perfect. And his perfect love will cast out all fear. Fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. My friends, I want you to know this morning that you can face your fears because God is with you. God is with us. I love what Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 says. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Fear not. I have redeemed you. Jesus Christ has redeemed you. If you haven't been redeemed, if you haven't given your life to Jesus, you can be redeemed this morning. I have called you by your name. God knows what your name is. He's called you by your name. And he says, you are mine. Those are beautiful promises. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. We are walking through difficult waters right now. We are passing through difficult rivers right now. And we are in the fire, not only as a nation, but we are in the fire globally because of COVID-19. I want you to know that as you pass through the waters, as you go through the rivers, as you walk through the fire, did you notice what God's word says? When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. We're walking through the fire. And Jesus told his disciples and he told us that in this world you will suffer tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. The storms, the fires, the difficulties, they fall on the just. Those who have been justified, those who have been made right with Christ through the blood of Jesus Christ. And the rain falls on the unjust, those who haven't yet come to faith in Christ. So the rain falls on the just and on the unjust. And as we go through these tumultuous times, as we go through these perilous times, Jesus told us that these difficult times would come. And as they have come, we need to remember that God is with us. He's with us. As it says in Psalm 40, 46, verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. It says in verse 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our shelter. The mighty Lord of angel armies is with us. God is with us when you pass through the waters. He's with you. He's with us when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And when we walk through the fire, God is with us. There's three guys in the Bible that were in the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were thrown into the, the fiery furnace and it was heated up seven times more. But guess who was with them in the fire? God Almighty was with them in the fire. And they were not burned. God's with us. Yes, we're going to feel the heat of the fire. And the flames are going to get close to us. But we aren't going to be burned because our lives are secure in Jesus Christ. We belong to Almighty God. I want to remind you of that. God is with us, as it says here in Psalm chapter 46. He won't leave you. God won't forsake you. He's Emmanuel, God with us. And we need to remind ourselves of this beautiful promise. God is with us. God's with us. He's going to see us through. 
He's going to see your family through. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He's going to stand with you. Remember, we serve Yahweh, a victorious warrior, Lord over everything. God's not surprised by this virus that has come upon us globally. God's not shocked that the nations are raging. God's not shocked that people are full of uncertainty. None of these things move God. And God's still in control. God's still on the throne. And for those of us who belong to God, God is with us. He's going to walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. God's going to be with us as we walk through the fire. He's going to be with us through the tumultuous storms, through the rivers and the, and the waters that perhaps may come up to our neck. God's going to be with us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. As he told Joshua, wherever you go, I am going to be with you. And Joshua had to face a lot of battles. The struggle is real. The heartaches are real. The difficulties are happening. But God is with us. Know this. It says in Psalm chapter 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. And I ask you a question this morning. Are you being still? Are you taking time to quiet your minds and to shut off all the noise and all the commotion that's swirling around you? Are you resting in the Lord? It says, be still, quiet your minds, quiet your heart, shut off all the noise and all the commotion, and rest in the Lord. Be still and listen to the voice of God. I believe that during these perilous days that God wants to speak to us, I believe that God wants to speak to you. He wants to teach us some lessons through all of this. He wants to remind us that he's in control. And through these crazy times, when people are freaking out, Quiet your mind. Quiet your heart. When we learn to be still, we get to know God in a far greater way. I don't know about you, but I need to be more in the presence of the Lord. God's presence will preserve us. His presence will steady us. I need more of His presence now than ever before. I need to be still. I need to quiet my mind and I need to quiet my heart. I need to sit quietly at the feet of Jesus. We need his presence. We need to be still. And his presence will steady us. And notice, be still and know that I am God. I love that. When we are still, we get to know God in a far greater way because God speaks to us. He will whisper to us. He will draw close to our ear and he will speak the delight of his word. The entrance of his words will bring delight to our souls.
And God's going to be lifted up among the nations. God's going to be lifted up in the earth. God will be high and lifted up. He will be exalted. In closing, I make the most of this season that we are in. How can you and I make the most of this season that we are in, these difficult days? Number one, spend time with God. Spend time with God. In this season that you are in, many of you are out of work. Many of you will be out of work in the coming days. So how can you make the most of this season? God will give you the desires of your heart. So spend time with God by worshiping Him. Another way that you can make the most of this season is by praying to God. Take prayer walks. Pray for our leaders. Pray that this virus would be used to awaken our nation and to revive the church of the living God. Pray that this virus would come to an end. Not so that we can just get back to what we are used to, but so that we can draw closer to Jesus Christ. Pray for the safety and the health of, of our leaders, our, our health care workers. Pray for those who are on the front lines. Another way you can make the most of the season is Pray with your children. Pray with your spouse. Cultivate a heart of prayer. Another way is look for ways to love your neighbors. Look for ways to love your neighbors. Jesus said to God's Word. God's Word, my friend, is powerful. It's effective. It's sharper than the sharpest knife. God's Word, the Bible says, will not return void. It will accomplish what God sends it down to do. Isn't that good news? Just as the rain and the, the snow come down from heaven and, and water the earth, God sends forth His, His Word from heaven and it will accomplish great mighty things. So, Look for new opportunities. Be creative. Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ using your smartphone. Use social platforms. Send out text messages. Call your family, your friends up. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Write them a letter pertaining to the gospel of Jesus Christ because the gospel is the good news. Souls are weary. Hearts are weighed down. People are, are burdened. And the good news will come in like a flood and give them the hope of Jesus Christ. Another thing that you can do in this season is on the heels of what I was just telling you to do. Use social media. However, I want to encourage you to take time away from social media. Take time away, disconnect from Netflix and, and Disney Plus. 
Spend some time away so that you can clear up your mind because if not, your mind's going to be freaking out. Your mind's going to start tripping out because you're going to hear this news report and you're going to read that news report and you're going to hear this news report. It's going to pop up on your feed, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the news outlets are going to bombard you. Take some time. Disconnect from social media, Netflix and, and Disney Plus and, and get away with your family. You might be thinking, well, I can't get away. I can't go to Disneyland. Well, you can go outside. And you can spend time with them and get reconnected to the things that matter. The things that matter most, more than anything else, is our relationship with Jesus Christ, our family and our friends and our church family. Let's get together as a church family. Let's call one another up. Get Zoom and get connected through, through Zoom. Use FaceTime or whatever it is to reconnect. Another thing that you can do during the season is, is don't cancel church. Don't cancel church. Have church at home. Have church over Facebook. Have church over FaceTime. Have church over the phone. You might be thinking, those, those of you who are younger, well, what's the phone? How do I have church over the phone? Call somebody. And have church over the phone. Don't cancel church during these difficult days. The enemy, he wants us to cancel church. Oh no, we, we, we are the church. It's not about the building. We as the people are the church. We've been called out of darkness and we've been called into his marvelous light. And do this. Say, God, what do you want to do in my life? And through my life? Through all of this? I think that's a good question during this season that we're in. And I'm going to repeat it again. Say this to God. Lord, what do you want to do in my life? And what do you want to do through my life? What do you want to do in my life? And what do you want to do through my life? I believe that through this time, God's going to reveal his calling upon your life. But we have to ask him, what do you want to do in my life? What do you want to do through my life? Life is more than just work. Life is more than just eating and drinking. Life is found in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have life more abundantly. God wants to give you a fulfilled, a satisfied life, an abundant life, a life that is full of joy, a life that is heard that God is our shelter. God is our strength. And God is our support in trouble. But you don't know God. You've never come to faith in Christ. You've never com confessed. You've never admitted that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. You've never repented. What, what does repent mean? It means to turn away it, may, it means to make a U-turn. You're going this way, and you turn, and you give your life to Christ. You repent. It means a change of mind and a change of heart. Some of you are fearful because if you were to die, you don't know where you would go, heaven or hell. I'm here to tell you this morning, as you sit in your living room, that you to know without a shadow of a doubt that when you die that you would be with Jesus in heaven. See, Jesus, as I said earlier, Jesus spoke to his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I have gone to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. You see, heaven is a prepared place 
for prepared people. How do you get prepared to meet your maker? How do you get prepared for heaven? The way you get prepared is by admitting that you're a sinner, confessing your sin, turning from your sin, and putting your faith in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. Your grandma can't get you into heaven. Religion's not going to get you into heaven. Being a good person and even doing good deeds, which we ought to be doing during this crisis. Good deeds will not get you into heaven. There's only one way into heaven. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me, through Jesus Christ. name is going to be written in the Lamb's book of life which is in heaven and one day when you die you will arrive in heaven where there will be no more tears no more pain no more suffering no more cancer no more coronavirus no more death all things will be made new and you will be in heaven with Jesus Christ for all of eternity so here's what I want you to do I want you to admit that you are a sinner. Repent and, and turn from your sin. And, and, and I want to ask you to do it now. And here's how you can do it now. By simply repeating this prayer after me. So bow your heads. Close your eyes. Grab your family's hands. Wrap your arms around them. And say this prayer with me. Inviting Jesus Christ to come and live inside of your heart. Or perhaps you were once walking with the Lord and, and now you're, you're lukewarm. You've left your first love. You too can rededicate your life back to Christ and, and ask Jesus Christ to, to fill you again. So here, I want to lead you in, in a word of prayer. Say this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner. Lord, I turn from my sins. I believe that you died and that you rose again. Lord, I give you my life. It's broken. It's fearful. I give you my heart. Lord, I ask you now to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the power, that strength to follow you all the days of my life in Jesus name and everyone said amen for those of you who have received Christ here's a few things that I want to encourage you to do number one let us know via social media send us a message let us know that you received Jesus Christ so we can send you a Bible I want to encourage you to do the ABCs. A stands for Amen. What does that mean? It's just a way of reminding you to pray. Amen. Prayer. Start spending time in prayer with God. B, the Bible. This is your game changer. This is your map. This is your GPS. This is what's going to change you. Get in the Bible. Get in the Bible. Number three, church. We're going to get back together again. This is just for a season. This is not going to last forever. The church will gather together again. And we're going to gather together again stronger than ever before. I want to encourage you now in this season. Don't cancel church. Don't cancel church. 
We need to pray. We need to be in the Bible. We need to get plugged into church. And then we need to start growing de discipleship. We need to start growing in the faith by reading God's Word, getting in the book of John. And then lastly, E, A, B, C, D, E, evangelize. What does that mean? That means to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Let them know that Jesus Christ died for them and that they can have everlasting life through Christ alone. I want to encourage you to do those things. And finally, send this message.